Okay. So those do this one. So you basically have uh, a young patient uh, have an RTA and there was this plenic hematoma. It was observed for 48 hours and remained very well. The consultant planned for further observation uh, and the splenectomy of the hematoma ruptures. And the patient wants to be discharged today uh, because there's an important interview and also facing some financial difficulties of his wife's new cancer. Uh, are you able to speak with the patient and see what they want to do? Okay, can I start? You would have already start, please. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Revati, one of the surgical doctors working here. Can I confirm I'm talking with Mr. John? Yo, hi there, it's, it's Abdullah here. I'm one of the, um, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Abdullah here. I'm, yeah, I, I, I know that I have a splenectomy and uh, I really want to go home today. I um, understand that you guys wanted to keep me in for further observation, but I'm not really convinced that I need to stay. Uh, I feel very well uh, myself and I would like to go home today. Uh, can I ask you why you want to leave the hospital? It's because I want to. Okay, but uh, let me first tell you what exactly your condition is so that you I get a I better understand idea my condition. It. I understand that I have a, a hematoma or blood in my spleen and I do understand this very well. Um, but by all means, yeah, if you want to explain it, you can go ahead and explain it. Yeah, so Mr. Abdullah, you have a condition known as splenic hematoma. So this means that there's a collection of blood around your spleen, which is present in the left upper part of your tummy. And the, in the blood test has also revealed that your hemoglobin has dropped by one gram, which means that there's continued bleeding. So if this goes on like this, there might be a danger to your life as well. So that is the reason we are keeping you in the hospital and we keep patients when it is only absolutely necessary, Mr. Abdullah. Can you please understand what I'm trying to say? I do, yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, if you give me a chance, I would have explained the same thing, really. I do understand that you wanted to keep me in for my own best interest, but um, I think uh, I'm not in a position that I'm able to stay in the hospital because uh, for two reasons, I have an interview uh, for uh, a new job and um, this interview is extremely important to me. Uh, I don't want to like mess it by any way. Um, I've been unemployed for a few months now and uh, I'm getting through very financial difficulties because my wife has cancer as well. And um, yeah, I would like to go and attend the interview and get my life sorted. And I do understand the consequences of that. Um, and I do understand I... that my life is in danger. I do understand your your situation, Mr. Abdullah, but uh, can we uh, can we postpone the interview to a later date, or can we arrange a virtual interview for I you? I don't think that you understand my situation at all because you've never been in my shoes uh, to understand my situation. Um, I can't uh, I can't you know I can't delay the interview and I can't cancel it, and it cannot be online interview. It's only in person interview. And you told about your wife being well. Maybe we can arrange a social worker to take care of her health because your health should be your topmost priority because if anything happens to you, there will be no one to take care of your wife. Can we do something and, like that? And, and if the social worker can, can pay, pay your rent as well. That won't be possible, but I, yeah, I thought... I'm sorry if I'm being rude, but like I said, I need to go and get my job sorted and um, uh, be with my wife, basically. Okay, and, uh, so Mr. Abdullah, can you please repeat to me what I've said to you so that I know you have understood me well? And I've said it. I've said it two times till now. I know I have a splenic hematoma, which means blood in my spleen after the trauma I had, and I know that this might bleed any time. I've been here for forty-eight hours, and uh, I seem to be doing well for the forty-eight hours. I know the consultant wanted to observe for longer time. But if I cannot stay here, I take all the risks of that. Uh, and um, if I get any adverse effects from this, I would be able to go to the hospital anytime. Okay. Uh, in that case, I won't be able. I won't be able to medically discharge you, and you will have to sign a legal document that you know the exact details of your case and uh, you know the consequences of this premature discharge. And we have advised you continued admission. So. And you, uh, I will uh, also, let me also tell you the warning signs you have to look out for. It. You have to look out whether you're feeling, uh, you, you're getting, uh, your, your tummy pain is excruciating or you feel unwell. You have to report back to us or any hospital which is nearby to you. 
Is that okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, I'll do that. Yeah, so can I summarize to you what we have told so far? Yeah, it's up to you. If you want to do that, do that. So you have decided to self-discharge yourself and, uh, you know, and you are going to sign a legal document stating that you are uh, you are aware of your condition and you take complete responsibility of any risk that would arise due to this. And you are also aware of the warning signs and warning signs uh, you have to look out for and will report back to the hospital or uh, hospital if in case any condition uh, in any in case you feel unwell. So is that OK, Mr. Abdullah? Yeah, yeah, sure. OK, so thank you so much for your understanding. We are here to help and support you. And in case you need uh, uh, to ask me, uh, in case you have any queries, I'll leave my bleep number with the nurse and you can get back to me. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, so tell me, what do you think? What do you think of your performance? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me, try to think what what. There was, you know, I couldn't talk more because the patient was talking. Yeah, so that's that's the thing. I always try and do that in the in the uh, the mocks. Um, basically, sometimes you actually need to let the patient talk rather than you talking. Okay, um, in in an exam setting, especially uh, you have like a few scenarios when the patient would really want to talk. So you want, you want to get everything out from them uh, and instead of you just um, uh, talking and explaining everything. All right. So that's one one point. The other point, after giving them the chance to talk, try to acknowledge their concerns in a better way. I think your acknowledgement to my concerns here were not adequate, in my opinion. Uh, it was OK. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't really uh, adequate enough. So when I uh, said you think there was uh, the you know the, sim the empathy part was missing. Yeah, it is, it's very necessary here. Um, uh, I, I felt like you were saying it in the same tone that you were saying everything else. So you were explaining the medical condition in the same way that you're saying, well, I understand your situation, but no, you need to acknowledge it a little bit more um, and try to uh, basically um, be in be in the shoes, basically. So. So and, and the, say, is there something like with with the voice modulation? Is that correct? The yeah, thing? correct. It's voice modulation yeah. and also the phrasing that you use. So I, I will basically say, well, I, I completely understand your situation. I understand that you know going back to be with your wife is something crucial for you, and also attending the interview with the financial uh, instability recently. However, I'm trying to think: is there anything that we can do to help you with that? So how do you feel if we can? maybe um, do the interview online from here? Or how would you feel if we give you a hospital leave for the time of the interview and then you can come back to the ward? Or how do you feel, um, you know, like you can say lots of the suggestions, but I feel like we're trying to just take the boxes and mention two things, which are the um, offering, delaying the interview. Delaying the interview is not really a solution in my opinion. And the second thing is, um, you know that the, um, that you said to, we're going to give you a social worker to attend with the family. All right. So you didn't really do a full acknowledgement of the current situation. I would try and speak more at this point. I'll try to acknowledge more, and I speak in a better tone uh, to convince them that we do understand and we're actually here to help. So, like I said, you can. The solutions are you can give them one. Uh, you can offer to uh, them a quiet room with good internet connection to do an online interview if it's possible. And you can offer them a sick note to delay the interview uh, and the sick note will, they will qualify with that to, to be actually able to delay the interview if the, if the company or the, um, the job provider is happy. Uh, or you can give them a hospital leave. They can go out for a few hours and come back to the ward. Um, to attend the interview and come back, basically. These are the options that you can offer in terms of the interview side. For his wife, you can actually explore more first. So how is she doing? I understand that she has cancer. Do you mind telling me how she's doing at the moment? Uh, does she need Does she need you to be physically there for her help? Or is it just the financial side and the, or the emotional support? And if she does, is there any family or friends around that can can, you know, uh, do what what you what you want to do, 
um, and if not, we can actually offer social service for her. All right. So, so, so this is how I would do it, really. And instead of just, okay. you, I felt like you were ticking the boxes. And well, uh, how about delaying the interview? The answer is no. Okay. Uh, how about uh, providing you a social service to your uh, wife? Okay, you can't. Well, okay. you, and you then you moved on. So this part is the key part I, here, I, and I would give yeah, it more okay. time. Okay. Yeah. And what about mm -hmm. the timing? Like, uh, you know, is it necessary that it has to go up to nine minutes? It, no, really. I I finish all my communication in less than nine minutes, maybe six minutes, and you just have to sit there if you've done what you could do. But in my opinion, in in this scenario, if you've done what I just said, you will actually reach the nine minutes, and sometimes you wouldn't even finish the scenario in nine minutes. So doing it quickly it doesn't mean that you've done very well, but try to do it right and then worry about the time later. All right. Especially in communication. In communication, you would have time to finish. Nine minutes are absolute, absolutely enough. All right. 